dive salvo. Okay, so that was sample number. I think we're gonna do that. Was seventy one? Oh yeah. Niskin. You guys want a Niskin here? Correct. Okay. Uh, uh, I believe so. Yes. And number two should be the only one left. Number two. Are you rack back all the way? I think so. Yeah, I am. You zoomed in? Paul wide. Really? Yes. And you're rack back all the way? Uh, yeah. We might have a tilt up or something. This seems close to me. Uh, two, that's the yellow one. Yep, two. You got it. Awesome. All right, six Niskins, six rock samples plus. Okay, I'm gonna head out here. So that means the next watch will have a... Uh, There's so many rocks here. ...chance to explore what's left at the summit. There's and, no... Uh, that was the only rock in the area. <laughs> <to summit too. laughs> <laughs> that was the only rock at this depth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice they're persistence, like, everyone. They're like everywhere now. Uh, where are you? You are... I'm coming. Oh yeah, you're good. I'm since, on my way. Since we're about to head into a watch change, um, front row, you can do what you think you need to do to get ready for that. But kind of, uh, unless there's a a reason to stop, kind of keep heading southwest and then transit transfer can over. Start the ship again, or Aaron can start the ship again. Okay, we're going to swap in the video chair. Right here. Uh-oh. Bridge, nav. Whoops. I don't know how did I do that. Thanks. <laughs> Can we move 100 meters bearing 230? What just happened there? Oh. Oh. That does sound really exciting.
Hello, everybody. Hello, world. The world is not ready for us, perhaps? I'll say. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yeah, I don't know if they're ready for us in another blue water watch. Oh, half blue water. Uh, well, there's this little traverse we have to do. <laughs> Though not technically blue water, it'll probably be pretty blue. Are we uh, going to 13? Yeah, not 13, but just to the next summit. Um, okay. But I think, if I understand correctly, we still want to just maybe top up on this, make sure we got the top of this one. And then high tail to 14, um, and probably the only chance of getting there is cruising through the water. Raj. Let's, let's see how Two about. knots. It'll be about, it's like... 0.7 nautical miles. It's pretty far. So navy water then, like yeah. cobalt blue water. It's like just crossing the moat to the other castle. <laughs> uh, looks like they're going two three zero. Yeah. Looks like maybe another 60 meters to go, so I think they're aiming to put us on top of this, where they think the top of this is. Awesome. Good morning, back row. Whoa, I'm loud. Yeah. Uh, turn myself down. Excuse me. Hello? Pretty loud. Just updating our website here. What are you doing to it? I'm updating our status to say that we're going to be rolling around in cobalt water for a little bit, except with better words than that. Nice. Hey, What oh, better oh. words could there possibly be? You, front row, let's take over. Hey, let's do introductions, front row. Oh, no. <laughs> Hi, I'm Trevor. I'm in the Argus seat. Hi, I'm Antonella in the Herc seat. Aaron, navigator. Aaron, video. Back row, do you want to, like, take it now? Yeah, I guess I, guess I could do that. Uh, <laughs> this is your watch lead, Megan Putz from the University of Hawaii. Hi, I'm Corley Rodriguez. I'm a grad student at the University of Rhode Island. I'm Avery Currington. I'm your science communication fellow for this watch and professional illustrator and cartographer. And we are looking at this little summit on Seamount F. We've been calling it F because it doesn't have a real name, so we gotta call it something so we're not confused. And there is a nice little community of corals up here. So we're seeing some bubblegum corals, the Paragorgia, those are those pink ones. Some Metallogorgia, that's that sort of umbrella looking coral. It always has its associate with it every time we see it, and that is Ophiocreus oedipus. Seeing some <laughs> unbranched with like corals that look like primnoids over here. Could be bamboo coral. Actually, I think one is a primnoid and one is a bamboo coral. So if you're having a hard time telling the difference between those two, um, you're not the only one. It's, it's a challenging thing to try to tell the difference between those two different corals. There is a Trisopathy's black coral. This purple coral is Victorgia alba, and it has an associate snake star in its branches. We have an Eritogorgia, is an Eritogorgias. Can we take a look at this little white one? Sure. Please zoom in there, please, Aaron. So I think this might be a bamboo coral. Yeah, and this one that we're zooming in on is Metallogorgia melanotrichos, with its associate. And then there's a little Bolosoma sponge, a Bathopathies. Yeah, I'm trying not to crush the things in front of me. No, I'm far away. Yeah, and that looked like a little bamboo coral that was sparsely branching. So there was just one branch. Probably similar to this bamboo coral that's up there. And there's a tiny cup coral. 
makes us a little cup coral. So if you were joining us yesterday morning, you may have noticed that there weren't that many things to look at in terms of corals. But right now that we're at the summit of this seamount, we are seeing quite an interesting diversity of different corals and sponges. This sponge right here is Regadrella. It has Some a really balls. fun texture on the outside. So as far as time this morning, it is a uh, uh, oh gosh, what time is it? Four o'clock, four a.m. Hawaiian Standard Time. Um, what are we expecting uh, the timing to be like for this dive? I know we're kind of wrapping up this morning. So the plan right now is to make our way uh, across this summit, this little mini summit. Um, then we will be transiting midwater to the second sort of main summit, the highest summit of this seamount, and exploring that for maybe about half an hour. And then we will be leaving bottom and recovering the ROV and then processing our samples. While we're doing that, we'll be transiting to our next dive site. And the plan is to dive as soon as possible. So in about four hours from recovery. Well, here's a little umbellopathies, a little black coral. This one, this big guy, that's a teleopathies. And it has a crinoid in its branches. That's a beautiful shot. Its neighbors are a Regadrilla glass sponge and a bubblegum coral. Bridge nav. Um, can we add another step, uh, six zero meters, two three zero? Here's the sack of calyx. Actually, no, maybe not. It doesn't look like sack of calyx. That might be amphidicella. Sponge, another type of stocked glass sponge. So right now we're getting a really good sense of what the community is like up here. Mm -hmm. Looks like there was an old topple skeleton of a bamboo coral. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, oh, nice. It, oh, that is. Oh, oh wow. Look at all coral. these bamboos. That's a good spot. Wow. It's right there. This is the spot. The, the corals know where the best spots are. Yeah. So this bright lemon yellow coral, it's right in the middle of our screen. That is the Caratoicididae S1 clade. And then we have a couple other um, types of bamboo corals all around here. So we've got so many bamboos. Get it? Just five? Oh, there was more, but they're not on the screen. We will survey a lot of them. Could we take a couple zooms on a few of these colonies to see what sure. kind of associates there are in the branches? Absolutely. Um, Erin, can you zoom in on her, please? I can always zoom in. Oh, look at this little friend here. 
Little squat lobster. That's such a pretty coral. Always got their claws up like we're having a party. Yeah, I don't know what the advantage is to that posture, but yeah, they always have their um, kilopeds up in front of them like that. And that's pretty typical Cole, of Back out the on uh, family Chirostylidae. Megan, do you want to spend extra time here, or are we just going to check it out? We're here? just going to check it out. Okay. Um, and then when you got to go, Come away, please. let's go. Okay. Oh, we've got a Japanese comment in the chat. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Uh, chat de Nihongo no comment ga arimasu. Do itashimashite. Do you just answer in Japanese? Yeah, there's like, thanks for live streaming. And I said, there's a Japanese comment in the chat. No worries. <laughs> cool. Can we zoom that little little bit? Um, yeah, quickly. So this uh, yellow zoom in, on this bamboo coral is actually a zoanthid. It's a type of coral. It's not an octocoral, as you can see, because there are more than eight tentacles around the mouth of each one of these polyps. Come wide, please. And the zoanthids grow on other corals. So these are parazoanthidae. So cool. Wow, oh, it's huge. Oh, wow. Yeah, it just keeps going. And I've been seeing some uh, parazoanthids on some of these bubblegum corals. That's that yellow that might be on top of the pink, making the colony look a little orange from a distance. Oh. These S1 clade bamboo corals are just like little bushes. I kind of wish I could have them in my yard. Wouldn't, they, wouldn't that look amazing? As part of your, uh, I feel like your front it yard, be dead. It, kind of it would me. be dead. But like, <laughs> imagine if your front yard was a seamount at like seventeen hundred meters. Then. Wouldn't that just be I feel the like prettiest? You'd be dead then. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's like that, and my uh, gardening Whoa. friend's gonna be mad at me. But that uh, that plant that's like a uh, red fire colored, and it's just like a uh, oh, what is it called? Like it's like a leafless bush, but it's just like red, and it's like a bunch of sticks looking. That's what that coral reminds me of. Oh yeah, interesting. Lots of corals here. There are a lot of corals here, so that's sort of telling us that we really have reached the high point of this seamount. When you're seeing these large bamboo corals, they really enjoy a high flow areas. And they're being very successful up here at the top. And we'll get back to the science communication question, but how old are these coral? Are the corals that we're seeing? Do we know how old corals are? Um, these ones are pr pretty old. Um, the way to tell would be to look at the base oh, of these fish. corals fish. and then um, measure how wide that base is. If we were able to collect a base, we could date it. That fish looked to be like a cusk eel. Family Ophidiidae. Uh, so the question is, uh, this person is a science illustrator, currently doing a lot of children's illustration, and wondering how, um, uh, any advice that I have for getting into my position, oh, um, and other advice as well. Um, so I'm actually not uh, certified as a scientific illustrator. You don't have to be. Uh, there are uh, certification programs and they're very intensive and competitive. Well, I, won't, I, don't, I won't say they're intensive, but they are highly competitive because uh, there's not a ton of programs out there. Um, so you can go get certified as a scientific illustrator, um, and that's a whole career path. You'll probably like uh, be illustrating for uh, science textbooks, that kind of thing, um, doing more technical drawings. Um, 
if you just really like to paint and illustrate science, um, you can do that as well. Um, especially working as a children's illustrator, like that's great. There's a whole market for um, science based uh, children's books and graphic novels. Uh, First Second Publishing has a whole line of, I think they're just called science comics as the, the name of the line uh, please series. Please, Aaron. You want to talk about this while we're pause? Yeah, I'm just trying to get a zoom in on some of these sparse branching corals. There's a student at um, University of Lafayette who is looking at um, bamboo corals and particularly interested in the ones that branch sparsely. So uh, since this one seems to be relatively sparse and has an interesting uh, branching pattern, I wanted to get a couple zooms for that study. So hopefully this coral could be of interest to her. Um, so in order to get into the Science Communication Fellowship position, you just have to apply. And really, they're looking for people who are very oh, excited please. about um, sea exploration and excited about uh, communicating what they learn to others uh, with, in a variety of backgrounds. Um, do I, so this is a fellowship. Um, I did not do any grad programs aside from a, a graduate certificate in GIS cartography, but that was, I think, after I was selected for this position. Um, and portfolio development, I'd have to see your portfolio. But yeah, I do have, uh, my name is on the website since you asked, uh, nautiluslive.org. I'm actually on the front page because I just, uh, did an update and the whole crew, uh, the whole watch, all of our uh, profiles and icons are listed down below. So I'm Abrian Carrington, and I think I'm the only me on the internet. So if you just search my name in quotation marks, you'll find my website. And definitely feel free, anybody out there who's curious about science and art, uh, send me an email. I'm great at answering emails. Except maybe right now when my computer doesn't want to function, but I'll be back on land in like a week. Bio question. Most of these fish that we're seeing seem to be adults. Uh, where are the babies and what's known about their reproduction? Well, it's pretty difficult to study reproduction at these depths. Uh, and we do sometimes see young juvenile uh, fish, but those babies are most often in the water column. So we're not seeing them settle down here near the bottom very often. It's a cool ridge here. That's a nice and, ridge. you know, in, in terms of what we've been we're observing, right it's, um, it's yeah. just a really, really small portion of what's out there. So you're not always going to see everything. It's easier to survey things that don't move using an ROV. Okay. Like these corals. But things are, that move around like fishes can be a little more challenging to survey with the ROV because there's this chance that they might actively avoid the ROV. Say you're a young juvenile fish, so like it might be advantageous for you fire. to hide from something large and unknown. So that might be a reason why we might not see too many of those juvenile fish around in this area. So we have this really gorgeous view. There's a little bit of this little ridge and all the corals are lined up along the ridge. That just goes to show that most of the time the current is coming across the ridge perpendicular to how the corals are oriented. So if we can zoom in right here and see how these two bamboo corals are different. I think one might be branching nodally and the other might be branching internodally. Zoom in please. No ambinodals. They could be ambinodal, meaning that um, they might have both nodal and internodal branching. We have seen that. Yeah, so this coral that we're looking at right now looks to be branching internodally and it has some zoanthids on it, anemones, slash some shrimp. 
and this one that's in the front, closest to Hercules. It looks like it might be nodally branching. And it has associates as well. Looks like anemones in the branches. So those are these like little little pink spots. And you can see where those spots are. Um, the, uh, the branches seem to get a little twisty. That's really interesting. And then this sort of feathery looking stuff it are hydroids. So those are growing on top of the bamboo skeleton where it's been denuded or there are no there's no more tissue. Yeah. Yep. There's a bit of current, so I'm yeah, thank you. Got another illustration question. Have I never introduced myself? By a bit of current, I mean a lot. I meant to. Um, being a preschool teacher, uh, thinking about a children's picture book with two pictures from the Nautilus dives to introduce children to what's in the deep. That would be awesome. Um, I will say that uh, there are different categories of books and like, uh, you know, what what the market likes best for different age groups. And the younger you get, the smaller those age categories go. So it's like, gets down to the months when they're really little. Cause you know, like this book's about counting, this book's about, you know, I don't know, fine motor skills or whatever. So um, I don't, I don't know about live pictures for preschoolers. It's not my field, um, children's books that young, but uh, yeah, if you're thinking of making something, try it out, pitch it around. Personally, I think we could all use some more cute books about the deep sea and how interesting it is to be an explorer. I'm never opposed to that. Um, yesterday, uh, Coralie was talking about Marie Thorpe, and uh, we have a picture book on board about uh, her um, journey creating the first bathymetric map, I guess. I guess that's what I would call it. Um, map of the uh, deep sea floor, and it's awesome. Have Wait, you read that's it? That's really cool. Is it a children's book or just a picture book? Yeah, it's well, okay. <laughs> it's a children's picture book. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll it's show both. you. It's both. It's both. Actually, I should probably just look it up so I can say it on the chat. One second. I took a picture of the cover. That's really cool. Science books are really cool. If you have children, you should definitely buy them science books. Please do. Yeah, when I was little, I really enjoyed the Magic School Bus. <laughs> that I was such a fun show, but it was kind of scary sometimes, like when they would go into the stomach. Yeah, I didn't really watch the show much, but I was super into the books. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I had, I don't know, nearly all of them. Every time they had the Scholastic Book Fair, that's like, I'd beeline for the Magic School Bus. It would <laughs> steal all my money. I'm kind of sad that we don't have book fairs as adults. Like, you know, at work, you just, there's a book fair. And book just fair day. Oh, so much I feel like I would spend so much money, though. Oh, yeah, it would be dangerous. I did have that because I worked at the library. So at the <laughs> end of the year, they would, um, it would be like the, the books that they no longer wanted in the collection. But they were sometimes like semi-rare. So like, ooh. Oh, that's awesome. Get a bunch awesome. of books. Some of them oh, yeah. were just like random. And I would always buy my brother a picture book while I was at it. Um, the book is called Ocean Speaks, How Marie Tharp Revealed the Ocean's Biggest Secret by Jess Keating. Uh, Jess Keating and illustrations by Katie Hickey. That's so cool. Okay. To all my friends who have kids, guess what book I'm getting them for their birthdays. It's going to be awesome. There's a pullout, like there's a foldout uh, section. Because that map was huge. It like covered like a couple walls or something. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So what age group is that book targeted for? Uh, let's see if I can find that. It doesn't always say on the internets. Cause yeah, it just says children's literature, so it might take me a second, but I might be able to figure that out. Hey, back row. Yeah. So we're just finishing up uh, 17 meters of the step. 
feel like we're pretty much petering out on the edge of this little mini summit ridge. Um, are you ready then to set up this to fly across the valley? Sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah, let's let's get it done and uh, fly across and see some more cool stuff, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? Will there be some jellyfish, Mayan? I hope so. Now that we're at the top of the seamount, there might be more stuff in the water column. Yep. That's what... Can you go a little higher? I'm well hoping for. Here. Yes, thank you. I like this one. I like the color. Yeah, yeah, there's a, this is a really great color. So this is a teleopathies, a type of black coral. I think I spy a little squat lobster hanging on the branch behind so that main stalk of this coral. There seems to be a lot of associates, like the, the tissue has receded from that main part of that coral and uh, there was some hydroids, there was uh, some barnacles, a squat lobster, quite a few things living on there. Seems like a lot of the corals up here have more associates than what we were seeing lower down. I also spotted another type of black coral. That's that whip black coral called Stickopathies. I love that one. I sneezed. Yeah. She has this little mouse sneeze. Um, I thought so it was you opening your water bottle. <laughs> no, I told you guys I don't like to sneeze big because my dad would sneeze really large when I was a kid and it made me really uncomfortable. Like, sounds like he's like throwing out his back when he sneezes. I um, have definitely almost thrown out my back sneezing. Yeah. Yes. Like you can get like whiplash from it or something. And so I taught myself as a young child to see, sneeze really small. Well, that is so sad and probably some therapy needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I looked uh, about the book on Amazon, which is Amazon lies. I would not trust this like as fact, but um, it says the reading age is four to eight years old and the grade level is preschool. Um, maybe. I will give that a maybe. Okay. Just sort of, you know. But yeah, it's for younger kids, for sure. Younger kids, but maybe not babies because of the pull-out aspect of some of these. Right, yeah, they would rip it to shreds. Um, and uh, some some books are, like, the reading level is higher. Yeah, see, one of the comments is like, good, but not perhaps the best for the youngest readers. Yeah, but some books are, like, read-along. So the adult reads and the kid just looks at the cool pictures. It's always nice to ha have someone read to you and get to look at cool pictures. Let's see another question. I do not personally have any coloring pages out in the world. I think Nautilus does. Let me look. Yeah, those are available on our website, I believe. I'm trying to find where on our website, though. Is it an education? I'm guessing it's under our education resources tab. I think I found the link on Facebook or Instagram at one point. Oh, yeah. They're great at putting their links on social media. But exactly. <laughs> so when anything new comes out, we're really good at, at making sure that there is a link for you. Oh, check out this sponge. There's totally a shrimp in there. Oh. Yeah, it's under Education Resources and then Games and Creativity. There's some coloring pages there. And that Bathopathy's black coral has a lot of associates, so a bunch of brittle stars. Yeah, the coloring book is pretty great. We were all admiring it the other night. Oh, yeah, we have an activity book. It is really cool. Mm -hmm. All those pages are able to be downloaded and printed out. Yep, the same spot on our education resources page. Orly, apparently there are tiny sneezers around the world. <laughs> tiny sneezers unite. That's exactly what they said. <laughs> it's a little squat lobster on this black coral. This is the one that we've been calling long arm spiny. Maybe a um, 
might be a Europe Tychus. I think, oh, that that one's a Europe long arm spiny. Yeah. Squat lobsters, so many. I love it. This might be an urchin down there. So many things to look at. It's hard to choose. So we've got a shrimp, some feather stars, squat lobsters, brittle stars. Looks like there were some zoanthids, hydroids, barnacles. Nice little dense community up here. This is a pretty sweet little ridge. Huh. I'm just impressed with some of the sizes of these corals, especially those long teleopathies. Here's a nice big regadrella sponge. Behind it, there is zoom in, please. actinostolid anemone. Just love the texture of that sponge. Surprise, there hasn't Thank been you. like a fancy uh, vase maker that hasn't done like a whole like coral. Or not coral, a whole like sponge collection. Mm -hmm. I feel like that should be a thing. Maybe it the is. The sponge collection. Maybe I'm crazy. Let's see. I can't Google artistic sponges. That's not going to give me what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just show you pictures of regular sponges. Yep. That'll be my new thing to re-enter into the gallery world. Just do a collection of sponges. Well, I think this might be a little sea pen. Oh. Zoom in, please. It is. It is a rock pen. We call it that because its base is actually modified um, Oops, to be a little added. suction cup. So it suction cups itself onto the rock. So we've been calling them rock pens. So this is an anthoptylum. Can we look at this coral? Oh. Or are we moving oh. on? Uh, we have a little time. The Sorry, which one again? Uh, this one that has the crinoid on top. Yeah. Okay, let me come down at it. It just looks Oops. like a little okay, bit of a in. different color. I think it might be a black coral. Yeah, it's definitely a black coral. Might be a trisopathies. Doesn't look quite right for tris trisopathies. Yeah, it's really interesting. Awesome. That was great. That's a 
beautiful little garden up here. All the bubblegum corals seem to have zoanthids. Ooh. I've been a little bit curious about how the zoanthids might uh, move from coral to coral. So if you see a bunch of one type of coral, well, other corals of that type have the zoanthid on it if they're nearby. That's pretty. Yeah, this this is just amazing. Who's this tall boy? So this could be a teleopathies or uh, a different type of bathopathies. Normally the teleopathies have a sparse branching pattern, but we do get bathopathies that are quite large too. It's like a giant rock pen. <laughs> It does have a very wide base, which is important uh, in order to really like keep it stuck onto the rock. Currents up here are likely quite strong at times, so you really need to be adhered very well if you don't want to topple over. That's just that's the inkwell that you dip the quill into. I know it does look like a fe the top of a feather pen. I think your next set of research, Megan, should be uh, coral and barnacle glue. All right, he just dialed in that move. Um, okay. Two zero zero. Uh, he put in one one five zero meters, one point five knots. So we should start picking up some speed at any moment. Okay. Just be ready. Big fly. Two zero zero. Well, take a nice last look at this amazing little mini summit on the top of this seamount. We are going to be transiting midwater to the main summit. Uh, it will probably take us about an hour to get there, and we'll have a little bit of time on the other summit to explore before we will be recovering. So just taking a little hop, skip, jump.
That's, I don't actually look at Grafana very much, but it is weird that mine's updated and yours isn't. Team Blue Water is entering our natural habitat. We are the best at Blue Water Transits. That's all I have to say. <laughs> is that what it says on the back of our t-shirts? We can make t-shirts. Oh, we could make t-shirts. Oh, I already saw a midwater animal look like a siphonophore. We're going to play my favorite game, try to catch the jellies game. Telecaster fishing. Oh, Telestrator, not Telecaster. Tel oh, yeah, Telestrator. I'm waking up, uh, but I was able to Google Maps like I know what a map is today. Looks like we're something like uh, 290 miles from our uh, port in Honolulu today, west, nope, east, I'm okay, nope, west, see, I was half awake, I did it, I almost, I almost got there, we would head east to get back to Honolulu. What is one thing you would love to see or discover while exploring the deep? Giant squid. Yeah, I think we keep seeing that one. Giant squid. That would oh, be I cool. 
I want to find Atlantis. Find Atlantis? Again, we found. <laughs> we can find an Atlantis, yes. <laughs> I want to find the Atlantis. I want to find those uh, aliens from the abyss. <laughs> yep, them too. Also, bonus points if the giant squid is, like, locked in combat with a sperm whale. Absolutely. Not, not necessary, but I'm mean, not going to say no to seeing that. If we saw any whale, that would be pretty cool, especially down this deep. All the marine snow. Oh, here's a question. How much noise does the ROV produce? And do we think it frightens away larger creatures? Probably. How how loud is the ROV? Have you guys like you have any sense of what it sounds like underwater? Ah, uh, it's loud. Oh, no, we had a good comparison last cruise. What was it, like a, a vacuum that's plugged in at the wrong RPM? Screaming? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Screaming. <laughs> so, yeah. Pretty sure. Also, the light. I mean, I'm, I just imagine that there's like a ring of creatures all around the ROV in the dark areas that are just avoiding us like the plague. I think they're down there laughing at it. Like, ah, look at this big, stupid, noisy thing. <laughs> uh, did we get a video of the white tip shark? Will we post it? We'll see. Well, the video goes to our uh, video team on land, and we'll see what they do with it. It was an oceanic white tip.
Megan, do you have time for a bio question? Sure. So what is a squat lobster? Are they like an edible variety of lobster? Like how comparable are they to uh, lobsters that we would get in a store? Um, so squat lobsters uh, could be edible. Um, if you ever heard of langostino lobster, those are actually squat lobsters. So in, in terms of taxonomy, lobsters and squat lobsters are, are not super related to each other. Um, the whole lobster thing sort of comes from the way they have their tail tucked underneath their body. So lobsters, like true lobsters, won't have their tail tucked at all. They sort of wander around tail extended.